ultimate champion boxing and sports. And boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. One of the greatest boxers of all time. And I would just go ahead and call him the greatest of all time. Because of everything this man stood for. And the things that he was willing to endure. There's not many, forget athletes, just human beings willing to endure what he was willing to endure based on what he believed in. For that, it made, made him, in my opinion, it's the greatest, one of the greatest human beings of all time. But as far as in sports, definitely, definitely amazing. Uh, an, an international icon and loved by many. But one thing about Muhammad Ali and his passing, not even, you know, I didn't understand it, and I don't think a lot of people really understand what happened with him because his family was very private, and they kept a lot of the medical issues that were going on with Ali. They kept that in-house. They made sure not to, to, to put a lot of the negative stuff out to the media. They were very private, very respectful. So when he passed, I, I was shocked because there wasn't, much known about Ali and his health condition. But it's coming out now. Uh, there was an article that came out recently and it was talking about Muhammad Ali and when he died in 2016 at the age of 74. We're talking about he died from something called septic shock, which is a life-threatening condition that happens when your blood pressure drops to a dangerously low level following an infection. Now, for, for the most part, most of the world knew that Ali had Parkinson's disease. You know, uh, Freddie Roach also has it. Um, it's nothing, nothing new to the, to, to, to the boxing fans. And Ali was pretty open about him having Parkinson. And um, so that doesn't come as a surprise. But his, his death wasn't a result of him having Parkinson's disease. Um, so just days before he was hospitalized, um, he went in with a respiratory infection. But somehow he ended up developing uh, this septic shock. And right now they're saying it was due to unspecified natural causes. And they expected him to just battle back. But they said at a certain point when he was in the hospital, his uh, condition became more serious and it be became clear that there just wasn't much optimism as far as him recovering. So um, the way it goes on, this article talks about sepsis alliance explains, that's the article, that septic shock is the final and most severe form of sepsis that is also extremely difficult to treat. Patients with septic shock are among the most ill in hospitals, with sepsis claiming the lives of 52,000 every year, in particular in the United Kingdom. So this isn't even talking about on an international level, just specifically talking about the UK. Up to 87% of sepsis cases start from infections that can be caught anywhere from work, school, or home. But if the condition is not recognized and treated quickly, it can suddenly turn into septic shock. So at some point, not sure when he developed it, but it obviously it sounds like it wasn't caught uh, quick enough. But um, you know, it makes you wonder like, you know, could, could something else have been done? But it goes on to say that the, uh, the body's extreme response to infection usually stems from one that has started in the lung, urinary tract, skin, or uh, gastrointestinal tract, um, according to the CDC. Initial symptoms will appear as weakness, chills, and rapid heartbeat and breathing rate. But over time, toxins produced by bacteria can cause damage to blood cells, uh, small blood vessels, and causing them to leak fluid into surrounding tissues. This can affect the heart's ability to pump blood to your organs, 
which lowers your blood pressure and means blood doesn't reach vital organs such as the brain and liver, and this is what was happening to Muhammad Ali. One of the main factors that causes sepsis to develop into septic shock is if treatment is given or not. Sepsis Alliance states that the chance of sepsis progressing to severe sepsis and septic shock causing death rises by 4 to 9% every hour treatment is delayed. So what this is telling us, it looks like at some point it wasn't caught early enough and it just continued to just, you know, exacerbate and get to the point of kind of no return. The medical definition of shock is a drop or fall in blood pressure. The average blood pressure for a healthy adult is less than or around 120 over 80. So when this level drops below 90 over 60, an individual is classed as having low blood pressure, also known as hypertension. A lot of you should be familiar with that word, hypertension. Having low blood pressure means that blood doesn't have enough force behind it to circulate around the body, leaving vital tissue starved of nutrients that need to work. It is one, it is one of these vital organs stop work, uh, it's when one of the vital organs stop working effectively that an individual is diagnosed with septic shock. In addition to low blood pressure, symptoms of septic shock can include an array of things like diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, pale skin, changing in mental state, you know, being confused, disoriented. But due to the seriousness of the condition, septic shock involves a number of complications, including respiratory failure. Remember, he was having a respiratory infection, so he may have started developing septic shock before he came to the hospital. Um, heart failure, kidney failure, and abnormal blood clotting. But nevertheless, things weren't caught early enough. The individual's chance of survival is based upon the number of organs that have failed. And remember, this, the, there's, there's these infections and things that can be picked up in school, at home, or out and about. So there's no telling when he started to become ill and when he went into septic shock. Was it before he got in the hospital, in the hospital? But all we know is that it wasn't caught in time to give him the treatment that was needed. But um, if it is caught in time, there are treatment options for medical professionals to try on patients for septic shock. This involves oxygen therapy and increasing blood for blood flow. So you want to make sure you get that blood pressure back up so those vital organs get what it needs. Um, this is going down here, man. In severe cases of sepsis or septic shock, the large decrease of blood pressure and the blood flow can kill organ tissue. So if this occurs, surgery may require to remove the dead tissue and in his state, it wasn't, it wasn't an option. Um, but the article goes on to warn that recovering from septic shock can take longer than a person may expect. Survivors may appear to be better, but many live with long-lasting effects from having been so ill. In fact, up to 50% of sepsis survivors live with post-sepsis syndrome, which can be mild or severe. Symptoms of PSS is what they call post-sepsis syndrome. Uh, insomnia, pain, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, hair loss, memory issues, frequent infections. So... Muhammad Ali, for those who didn't know, because it wasn't really talked about what were his causes of death, people just, I think it was saying like natural causes. It wasn't, it wasn't natural. Um, he, he, he died of sep uh, septic shock. And um, extreme septic shock. And it's just sad, but you know, we have no control over any of those things. And the fact that he could have contracted whatever made him ill, it could have been at home, it could have been out and about, it could have been anywhere, but it is what it is. The family thought that his death was due to unspecified natural causes, but they finally come out and kind of shed light on what exactly was going on and what the final diagnosis was as far as his death. And... Um, that just, to be honest, that just kind of foot stumps even more the importance, especially with like COVID-19 and different things going on. And even aside from that, you know, maybe we should, people should get in the habit more of wearing a mask. You know, when I was, uh, when I lived over in Asia, everybody wore masks. You know, when I first got over to the, to the country, Korea, Japan, Philippines, um, yeah, Okinawa, Blew my mind, man. It scared me when I walked out and got off the plane and saw so many people with these uh, face masks on. 
I was like, what the hell is going on here? But that's something that they did just as a, as a courtesy, not to make somebody else sick. And to think that just a simple mask can prevent so many different types of illnesses and the spread of different things. Um, but people can be so stubborn and stupid. Not saying that would have prevented what happened to Muhammad Ali. I'm just saying this, just just knowing that him being out and about, a person being out and about, just you know, get exposed to things that can eventually you know result in something like this. So you know, everybody needs to just be courteous and mask up, especially if you know you have a cold or something's going on that you can't explain. You know, get a mask on and get to the doctor. But for those of you who didn't know, now you know. Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time, uh, when he passed away, that's the reason. That's what happened to him. And um, hopefully I shed light for a few. It did for me because I, did, I didn't know. I just thought it was just natural causes. But that being said, I'm going to go out here, man, and start planning my, net, planning my day tomorrow. So shout out to all the veterans. Thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. And as always, I'm in the breeze.